Beloved, I've always been intrigued by Philippians 2.12, especially the last part. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Certainly, the Apostle Paul's words here are not meant to incite dread, but to spur us towards the transformative journey of salvation. When Paul says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, he's referring to a life where God's grace demands personal effort. Therefore, salvation is not a passive experience. It is an ongoing process that involves our daily participation in God's work in us. This working out does not mean that we earn our salvation. Christ's sacrifice has already secured that for us. However, we must have reverence for God's love and holiness and reflect his life more each day. Paul uses the term fear and trembling to convey the seriousness and respect we should have for God. We are to approach our faith with a holy awareness that we are in the presence of a mighty and loving God who is at work in us. This is not a casual journey. It is one that requires humility, surrender, and a deep commitment to let God shape our hearts. The Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard, often called the father of existentialism, was deeply inspired by the scripture. For Kierkegaard, the call to work out your salvation with fear and trembling requires a leap of faith, an existential decision to trust God in the midst of the anxiety of life, something far removed from a complacent Christianity. In his seminal work, Fear and Trembling, Kierkegaard reflects on the story of Abraham and Isaac, using it to demonstrate the tension between faith and reason, between the infinite and the finite. Kierkegaard saw in this biblical story and in Philippians 2.12 the drama of the human soul wrestling with God's call, facing the unknown with fear and trembling, yet still stepping forward in faith. For him, true faith requires this intense personal engagement with God, a profound recognition of our own limitations and the immensity of God's will. The phrase, work out your salvation, emphasizes the personal responsibility of every Christian in their sanctification, the process of being made holy. We ought to be aware of the seriousness of this journey with God. In this regard, verse 13 provides crucial context. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Here Paul reassures us that we do not work out our salvation alone. We must look to God to enable both our desire and our ability to live according to his will. Thus our efforts are partnered with God's grace and power, ensuring that our work is not in vain. Let us not take God's grace for granted, but rather accord it the reverence which it merits. Let us with fear and trembling cooperate with the work of God in us. Stay humble. Stay blessed. Shabbat Shalom.